Check. Test, test, test. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The ceremony will begin in five minutes. about a special place in our country. This place is nestled in the Mid-South in the watersheds of the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers and made special by the people who live and work there. And there are some very special folks who take care of these rivers, the Nashville District Corps of Engineers. We've been caring for the rivers for a mighty long time. It was back in the 1700s we started working on the rivers. Our young nation was growing and the movement to the west was on. We were there to make navigation on the rivers possible and in no time you could ride the river from Knoxville to New Orleans. We continued to work on the rivers straight through the Great Civil War. Our folks were on both sides of that conflict. Some of the fortifications we built still stand today, Fort Donaldson and Fort Henry. After the Civil War, we continued to improve the rivers and added locks and canals and muscle shoals and culvert shoals. The district was moved to Nashville in 1888 and General Barlow was our first district engineer. And I'll bet you didn't know that General Henry Roberts, author of Roberts' Rules of Order, was a Nashville DE. By the namesake of University of Tennessee's football stadium was also a district engineer, General Robert Nalen, who was both district engineer and UT Vols football coach. We built the great hydropower projects like Wilson Dam and Wolf Creek, and in 1933 gave responsibility for portions of the Tennessee River Valley to the newly created Tennessee Valley Authority. They've been our steadfast partners ever since. We helped with the 10 ton waterway and constructed flood protection for the Upper Cumberland area. We were there to design and build Oak Ridge for the Department of Energy and the Arnold Engineering Development Center for the Air Force. Today, we maintain and operate the best recreation sites in the nation and our rangers and regulatory folks help to keep the environment clean and healthy. Our planners and engineers work with local communities to provide needed flood protection and stream bank improvement projects and soon, New navigation locks will be built at Kentucky and Chickamauga 
which will provide economic stimulus for the entire nation. Patriotism runs strong in the Nashville district. We were there to help out on the Great Floods in 1977, and our folks were there in New York at Ground Zero. Well, our folks have been involved in every war and natural disaster, from the Revolutionary War to the Global War on Terrorism. Yes, sir, we come to work every day with pride and purpose, because we've got something worth preserving. Proud tradition and bright future of the Nashville district. Our folks put their hearts and souls in their work, and it shows. We are the Nashville district. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Brigadier General Kimberly Peoples, Commander of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Great Lakes and Ohio River Division, and today's Senior Commander, welcome to today's Change of Command Ceremony. Today also marks 248 years of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers service, and we reflect upon the amazing contributions of our team and our predecessors have made on our Army and nation. Since 1775, the soldiers and civilian personnel within the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers have played crucial roles in nearly every significant event that has formed the foundations of our Army and our nation. From our beginnings with Colonel Richard Gridley, the first Chief of Engineers, and his construction of the fortifications for the defense of Breed's Hill during the Battle of Bunker Hill to begin our independence, to the mapping and foraging of the westward expansion across the Rockies with Lewis and Clark's expedition, to constructing our nation's capital, opening trade and navigation along the Mississippi River, advancing space exploration, and deploying to austere locations to help our fellow Americans recover from disasters, USACE has been there. Please join me in a round of applause to commemorate the Corps of Engineers' birthday today. This morning, we bid farewell to Lieutenant Colonel Joseph M. Saul and welcome incoming commander, Lieutenant Colonel Robert W. Green. Ladies and gentlemen, our special guests attending today's ceremony include Ms. Kathy Saul, wife of Lieutenant Colonel Saul, Joey Saul, son of Lieutenant Colonel Saul, and Cody Saul, son of Lieutenant Colonel Saul, as well as other family members. Mrs. Crystal Green, wife of Lieutenant Colonel Green, and Jacob, Taylor, and Autumn Green, children of Lieutenant Colonel Green, in addition to uh, other family members. The Honorable John Cooper, Mayor of Nashville, Tennessee. The Honorable W.B. Buddy Frazier, Mayor of Waverly, Tennessee, and his wife Donna. Mr. Joseph Savage, Director of Programs, Great Lakes and Ohio River Division. Mrs. Stephanie Hall, Director of Regional Business, Great Lakes and Ohio River Division. Colonel Eric Crispino, District Commander, Louisville District. Colonel Brian Saucer, District Commander, Memphis District. Lieutenant Colonel Kristen McFarland, Battalion Commander, Nashville Army Recruiting Battalion. Lieutenant Commander Morgan Kelly, Superintendent, Marine Safety Detachment, Nashville, U.S. Coast Guard. Mr. James Everett, General Manager, River Management, Tennessee Valley Authority. Ms. Chrissy Hurley, Meteorologist in Charge, National Weather Service, Nashville. Mr. David Solliers, Commissioner, Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation. Major General Jimmy Cole, Deputy Adjutant General of Tennessee. Mr. Patrick Sheehan, Director, Tennessee Emergency Management Agency. Ms. Karma Smith, Environmental Division Assistant Director, Tennessee Department of Transportation. Mr. Mitchell Hayes, Administrator, Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway Development Authority. Mr. Klein Jones, Executive Director, Tennessee River Valley Association. Mr. David Blackwood, Executive Director, West Tennessee River Basin Authority. In addition, staff from the offices of U.S. Senators Mitch McConnell, Marsha Blackburn, and Bill Haggerty, and Tommy Tuberville, as well as the offices of U.S. Representatives Chuck Fleischman, Tim Burchett, Mark Green, John Rose, and Andy Ogles. From time immemorial, armies throughout the world have conducted ceremonies to commemorate victory over an enemy, to honor their heroes, to celebrate special occasions, or to pay homage to their fallen comrades. These ceremonies add color and pageantry to military life, 
In the United States, the foundation of our present ceremonies was laid by the Continental Army. Today's ceremony is a reflection of procedures practiced since the dawn of our nation. Today's ceremony is derived from our Army's first manual of ceremonies, the Blue Book, written by General von Steuben. The ceremony that you're about to see in includes uh, the arrival of the official party, presentation of honors, honors to the nation, change of command, remarks, and conclusion. We hope you enjoy today's historic event. The reviewing officer for today's ceremony is Brigadier General Kimberly A. Peoples. The color guard is provided by the Joint Forces Headquarters Tennessee Army National Guard Color Guard under the direction of Sergeant First Class Joshua Keith. Musical support is being provided by the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault, Army Band under direction of Sergeant First Class Ryan Westbrook, and the bagpiper is Piper Jonas. Uh, is Piper Jonas, excuse me. On behalf of the soldiers, civilians, and families of the Nashville District, red roses are now being presented to Kathy Saul in a tradition symbolizing the appreciation and support of the contributions made by loved ones. In addition, Lieutenant Colonel Saul's sons, Cody and Joey, are receiving district coins. Yellow roses are also being presented to Mrs. Crystal Green to welcome her and the Green family to the Nashville District. Her daughters Taylor and Autumn are receiving yellow roses as well, and her son Jacob will receive a district coin. Please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors, honors, and our national anthem sung by Miss Betty Barnes and the invocation given by Pastor Bobby Harrington, lead pastor, Harpeth Christian Church.
say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glared the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Would you please pray with me? <clears throat> God, we come here and we acknowledge our thanks to you and the opportunity to pause and thank you for and commemorate the successful command of Lieutenant Colonel Joe Saul. Those who know him know him as a man and we're thankful for the man that you've made him to be, for his nobility, his professionalism, his integrity, his compassion. And I am told it created a climate for the accomplishments of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers National District. God, we want to stop, and I especially want to stop and thank you for the legacy of this family. His father, Joe, and mother, Kathy, who preceded him. His wife, Kathy, who supports him. And his sons, Joey and Cody, as they continue to support Joe as he serves in the Army. Also, God, we stop and acknowledge Lieutenant Colonel Robert Green, as he assumes the mantle of leadership, may you continue to imbibe him and bless him as he follows Joe with the same wisdom, character, and integrity that has brought him thus far. God, we pray for his wife, Crystal, their children, Jacob, Taylor, and Autumn, and we pray that you would help them integrate quickly into the new community and create lasting memories and that this would be not only an effective opportunity to serve, but a good opportunity and a blessing for their family. God, I, I just want, to, as we all pause before you, to give thank you for the team uh, here in the National, Nashville District. God, we're grateful for a military that protects us, and we're grateful for their dedication and sacrifice for the mission, for the expertise that provides security and stability for our nation. God, we pray for our nation. We pray that our nation would be grounded in the principles by which it was given birth, and we pray for our nation with the challenges that we will face in the future. These things we pray in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, maker of heaven and earth. 
In his name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The change of command is a simple, traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the ceremony is the passing of the unit's colors. These colors represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers and civilians. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing their responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. Throughout history, commanders ensured their unit flags were carried by one of their most trusted officers. This practice was used in the United States Army until 1813 when the re regulations were changed and the flag was entrusted to color sergeants or sergeants major. Division commanders select one of their most trusted civilian advisors to perform the honors. Today, Ms. Lindsay Harbor, Deputy District Engineer, will have this honored role. The passing of the colors symbolizes the transfer of authority from the outgoing commander to the incoming commander. Because of the reverence of the commander's feel towards the colors, it is kept over their left breast during the transfer. The passing of the colors demonstrates to the soldiers and civilians of the organization the old commander has passed the mantle of leadership to the new commander, and with this also passes the loyalty of the workforce to their new commander. By the authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5, the undersigned assumes command of the Nashville District U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, effective 16 June 2023, signed Robert W. Green, Lieutenant Colonel, Engineer Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the senior commander, Brigadier General Kimberly A. Peoples, commander, Great Lakes and Ohio River Division. Good morning. What a beautiful day. Distinguished guests, commanders, senior executives, teammates, partners, friends, and family of the Nashville District and the Great Lakes and Ohio River Division, and what a list you are. Thank you for joining us today for this historic event. In 2021, the Nashville District Change of Command was my first official function. I mentioned this in the back. Um, it was in this exact venue, and what a fitting venue indeed. Home to the proud Tennessee National Guard, and I want to thank you for hosting us, for providing the Color Guard today, and for your professionalism and teamwork. We are one army. We stand together for the freedom and liberty of this great nation. Mayor Cooper, I'm not sure where you are. Hi, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you for the warm Nashville hospitality, the perfect weather today, and for being here. Uh, what a great town and the perfect anchor for this prestigious district. Special welcome to the Saul and the Green families, our guests of honor today. Joe is joined, as you heard, by his wife, Kathy, two sons, Joey and Cody, Joe's parents, Joe and Kathy, who traveled from Arlington, Texas, and Joe's brother David and wife Mayanne from Dripping Springs, Texas. Just seems like yesterday when we first met two years ago. Uh, Rob is joined this morning by his wife Crystal, their three children, Jacob, Taylor, and Autumn. Rob's parents, Ann and Gary, had an opportunity to meet last night. Thank you. Aunt and Uncle Dan and Pat Parker and cousin Kristen. 
Please join me in a warm welcome for all of you and our special guests. So as you've already heard this morning, the mission of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is to deliver vital engineering solutions in collaborations with our partners to secure our nation, energize our economy, and reduce disaster risk. Nine divisions and 44 districts proudly carry out this important work for our nation in both military programs and civil works, day in and day out. Today marks 248 years of this call to service, 248 years. And as you heard in the introduction, the United States Army Corps of Engineers has been there. Nashville District has been there. Nashville District is the division's southernmost district. Its responsibility, again, as you heard, encompasses the Cumberland and Tennessee River basins, critical role and impact on the Ohio River and the Mississippi. It's a 59,000 square mile area in parts of seven states. It's a very large footprint, right, Joe? Uh, and command requires a lot of travel, and I think, Kathy, you would agree. Uh, the district opened in 1888 when Colonel John Barlow transferred from Chattanooga District on the Tennessee River to become its commander and take charge of the construction and locks and dams on the Cumberland River. Today's Nashville, uh, today Nashville's mighty team of teams continue this tradition and execute a full suite of Civil Works missions in partnership again with you and the Tennessee Valley Authority. I've had the privilege and honor to see this work firsthand over the last two years. It's nothing short of heroic. Through the pandemic, executing a historic workload, thanks to our congressional members, working through changing policies, extreme weather, high and low water conditions, population growth, and a host of challenging conditions, I'm sure you can fill in the blanks on, the district has flourished. And you've, Nashville, you've done it together. The Army, as in life, is a team sport. Like I, as I like to say, we can't go it alone. We must remain engaged and committed together. And this is my personal experience with the district. You live this culture, it's who you are, your family. Working with partners and stakeholders at the federal, state, local levels, First Nations, industry, academia, non-governmental organizations, and U.S. citizens, as a testament, many of you are here today as a result of this honest and engaged approach to partnering, and I want to thank you. In keeping with our military tradition, dating back to those 248 years, today's change of command continues the proud lineage of Colonel John Barlow and many others as we recognize the commanders of this world-class organization. First, I want to thank the Saul family, Joe, your wife Kathy, your sons, for your outstanding support and dedicated service to the Nashville District and this wonderful community. Kathy and Joe met when they were in Texas A&M and were married a little after he graduated. Kathy took a break from um, being an elementary school teacher in Florida. And upon arriving here in Tennessee, she began pursuing a lifelong dream and to attend cosmetology school. Kathy graduated in this tour. She's a licensed cosmetologist, now working at a salon in Franklin, Tennessee, and you love it, right, Kathy? It's amazing. Kathy has a huge heart and takes positive action to help others in every way she can. Joey is 20 now. Wow, it's just amazing. He completed his sophomore year at Florida State University. He's working towards a degree in computer science. Joey, your dad describes you as the rock of the family, and it's great to see you again. Cody is 17 years old, just completing his junior year of high school at Page High School in Franklin. Cody loves computers, programming, and digital design. Do I have that right, Cody? And uh, you're resilient. That's what um, your dad and your mom have to say. And you have a spirit for service. We're also happy to have your parents here today and the family. It's great to see you again, and thank you. Joe proved himself a gifted and talented leader over the past two years. He understands that the success behind mission execution is about team and it's about people, people first. Joe is one of the most caring leaders I've ever met, um, and he does have a story or two. I'm sure you all will agree. I'd like to take a moment to highlight just a few significant achievements the districts, uh, districts accomplished under Lieutenant Colonel Saul's watch. 
Under your command, Joe, the Nashville District awarded Wolf Creek and Center Hills spillway gates for 109 and 91 million, respectively. You secured uh, with and through Congress over 500 million in funding for Chickamauga Lock, Kentucky Lock, to see the construction through of these incredible me mega projects. You've implemented a comprehensive project governance structure that more efficiently forecasts, programmed, and monitors projects built to maintain partnerships with local state national partners, um, some of which to include the Tennessee National Guard, TVA, Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, and all of you here today. You did that to ensure the district was, and was integrated into planning and poised to provide value in emergency response and recovery to Tennessee and, to, and across the nation. Joe demonstrated exceptional leadership and dedication in the response to a tragic flood in Waverly, Tennessee, and I really appreciate the mayor, you being here today with us. Um, through that tough, tough time, you led the creation of a Waverly Flood Task Force with the state and coordinated efforts across multiple local, state, and federal agencies with your mighty team. Through Joe's collaborative efforts, he established strong partnerships between the district and local community, significantly contributing to informing the public about the measures you can take to protect yourselves and the, and the communities from property in the case of a flood. Joe, you've displayed unwavering commitment to the USACE mission through your continual focus on people, as I mentioned. After two years of uncertainty during the pandemic, providing stability, purpose, and connection to the workforce, while simultaneously allowing the district to solve the nation's toughest engineering problems without interruption has been your priority. I could go on and on, but we do have snacks and water in the back, so I'll stop here, but it's, it is fun for a change to see Joe a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> As Joe led the district across these 59,000 square mile uh, territory, there was Kathy. Kathy joined in setting a positive climate in the district and the community. You built strong relationships, all while taking care of your family, Kathy. Your sacrifice reinforces the incredible strength of our army and, the na and our nation um, that we re receive from these strong army families in all of the moves you endured. Thank you again for your continued service and dedication. It matters. Leadership like this deserves applause. Would you join me in a round of applause for the Saul family? <laughs> Joe, extremely, job extremely well done. It's been an honor to work together over the past two years, every minute of the two years. For the public good in Nashville and across America, your legacy is lasting, not only a result of what you've done by the, by the person that you are. You have expertly moved the ball down the field. You've reduced obstacles, provided keen insight, and you've done it together with a smile and a story or two. Uh, you will be sorely missed, but I'm confident about your future in our regiment and in our army. Enjoy some well-deserved time off and leave with Kathy and your boys as you pass along your second phone. And John Van and I uh, and the entire division team wish you, Kathy, Joey, Cody, all the best. Godspeed. And as always, as we bid farewell to an outgoing command team, we welcome a new one. And I'd like to uh, recognize the Green family again, Rob, Crystal, and their three children. Rob and Crystal met in ROTC at Michigan State, and as I understand it, you were on a Ranger Challenge team together. I got some stories last night. Um, Crystal, who's from Waterford, Michigan, currently works as an intelligence research specialist for the Department of Justice. She holds a Bachelor of Science and Master's of Science degree in Criminal Justice from Michigan State University, and Michigan seems to be the only thing that I can find that may be a minor flaw. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm from Ohio. Um, she served over eight years on active duty as an aviation and UH-60 Black Hawk pilot before becoming a full-time mother to the year three children. You, like Kathy, have endured multiple deployments and you gave birth to your third child while Rob was deployed. Rob describes you as someone who puts everyone first and I can see that already. Uh, Jacob's nine years old. Welcome, Jacob. 
He's going into fifth grade. He loves sports, especially soccer and ninja warrior training. Is that true, Jacob? Uh, hobbies are Boy Scouts and Minecraft Legos, and he wants to be a construction builder. So I'm going to get Norma and uh, give you Norma's card. Um, we need you. Um, Taylor's eight years old, headed into the third grade, loves soccer, gymnastics, hobbies are Girl Scouts, swimming, and baking. And Taylor, I understand you want to be a chef. All right, awesome. You're in a good place for that. Uh, Autumn is six years old. She's entering into first grade, loves to dance and gymnastics. Her hobbies are playing with Barbies, anything with animals. And Autumn wants to be an animal doctor or a YouTuber. Is that right, Autumn? <laughs> Her parents are pushing for a veterinarian. <laughs> uh, Rob and Crystal also have a very supportive family. You're here today. Uh, Rob and Crystal and your family, I want to welcome you to the Great Lakes and Ohio River Division and to Nashville. Uh, Rob is no stranger to the Corps or the state of Tennessee. His most recent assignment was as Deputy Commander for the Memphis District. A native of Michigan, Rob received his U.S. Army commission in 05 as an engineer officer at Michigan State. He's a seasoned professional. He's a very talented engineer officer. He's deployed multiple times, has a great reputation across our Army. He is a perfect fit, the right leader at the right time to carry on the legacy of this proud district. I believe there are some Memphis district teammates. Obviously, I saw the commander and many of your friends that can attest to my assessment. Rob, I'm confident in your ability to successfully lead this district and deliver. You'll deal with new challenges and old, but I'm confident you'll bring a great energy and new perspective to achieve continued success. You have full support of the division and you're, you are joining a winning team. Welcome again to the Green family. And as I close today, I'd like to publicly recognize once again this superb Nashville district team. I'm proud of your vast accomplishments, solving the nation's hardest problems. And the last two years have been more than challenging, as we mentioned earlier this morning. It's been a deployment together of sorts. But you've excelled and you've answered the nation's call once again, and you've done it together. Thank you for your loyalty, dedication, and perseverance to Colonel Saul and his family. I couldn't be more proud of this winning team, and I look forward to what lies ahead. And special thanks to Ms. Lindsay Harbor, Major Mannering, Ms. Joanne Mann, Ms. Mr. Bill Peoples, Ms. B.B. Barnes, IT Logistics Team, Nashville Corporate Board, the um, Mighty 101st, our wonderful Color Guard, and many, many that were involved in today's ceremony. B.B., what a multi-talented, wow, what a powerful rendition, and Pastor Harrington, the invocation is such an important aspect of today's ceremony, and you've made it unforgettable today. Thank you for being with us and your wise words. For all of you in attendance to honor the Nashville District, I want to thank you again for your support to us, to this district, and to America. May God bless our nation, our military, as we continue to fight and win our nation's war and engineer for the common good. Be all that you can be, building strong together as Seons. Ladies and gentlemen, the 67th and outgoing commander of the Nashville District, Lieutenant Colonel Joseph M. Saul. Somebody told me if you drink water, you can't cry at the same time, so we're going to test that out. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, I really appreciate you all showing up here, and especially with the weather and the, and the conditions just getting into town. And I know a lot of, a lot of folks um, really had to work hard to be here today. Um, and it, it's very special to myself, to our families, uh, and to the Nashville District. Uh, I, I know how busy um, everybody is. I think we just talked through some of that. And so, so taking a pause for something like this uh, means it's significant enough and, and really reflects, I think, on who you are as a person and, and where we are as a district, and so thank you. Really special thanks to the Color Guard. We put them through a couple different uh, variations, um, and, and you guys are rock stars, and really appreciate it. Um, 
and, and I will try and go fast. It's not my specialty. B.B. Barnes, I didn't know I hadn't heard the pipes, so thanks for that. B.B. Barnes uh, is my, my admin assistant, uh, and uh, your pipes rivaled uh, Piper's, uh, but yours were great as well, and thanks for that special touch. Uh, and that I, I, two years, I'm still not quite sure why that's a part of the ceremony, but it, I hope it never goes away. It's phenomenal. Uh, and to the 101st and Ben, uh, thanks for keeping us Army strong. Uh, really appreciate you being here. So two, two very uh, short years ago, I stood here humbled uh, but confident in, in the team of teams and, and talked through that. Um, looking back, I was a bit naive um, or just didn't see how hard uh, this was going to this was going to be, and we were going to have to work uh, together. Magnitude of the challenges that we would tackle as a team, and the opportunities that we would see and and needed to seize. Now transitions always create these these moments of reflection, and looking back, you're you're really able to see, depending on your mindset, but how how truly blessed you are, um, even in or maybe especially as you go through hard times. And I, I kind of lump my my blessings into faith, uh, family, and, and friends. We're in the South, so some folks add a fourth F in, in football. Um, and I think, you know, it's appropriate, and I respect that. Um, but as a fighting Texas Aggie, I, I'm just not going to focus on that as a blessing right now. It, 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 even in these trying, trying football times, uh, I stand before you a blessed man. My faith sets the foundation for everything else. It, it grounds me, gives me confidence. And I thank, I thank God for all the gifts. I put all the thanks up front to see if, if that was a good idea. Um, so it might not have been. I thank God for all the gifts in my life. I, I, thank, I thank him for directing my steps um, that, that aren't always what I had planned. And it's brought me to you and, and brought our family into this next phase of life. Um, and he remains my, my source of strength. My family is my ultimate support. Uh, I, t I talked to General Peoples yesterday and, and really summed it up as I have no excuse um, for being anything but grateful. My love and supporting parents, teaching me the ways I should go, uh, and then me running the other way, uh, and, and them bringing me back and welcoming me home. Joey and Cody, don't do that. Just do what who else says. Uh, my sister Christy is serving a physician in Texas with her hubby Mark and their little rascals. Sister Susie serving, uh, her husband serving in the Army uh, as, a, as a sapper in, uh, in Europe with, with their uh, bundles of joy. Uh, Brother David's here. Where are you, David? Oh, you don't stand up. He, he didn't wear a blazer. Um, <laughs> this, he's always been bigger and more handsome than me, so I'm maybe a little passive aggressive with him. Um, but he, uh, thanks, for, thanks for being here, Dave. Uh, and, and his wife, Mann, who's from Nashville, uh, and, and family's still here, and it's special that you guys could be here. She's a, she's a UT Vol fan, um, moved, moved to Texas uh, when they got married and became a UT Longhorn fan, and cheers for both those ugly orange uh, uh, teams. I'm just kidding about UT uh, Knoxville. Uh, Devil Spawn in Austin. Uh, so, uh, Jack Rue, Princess Kate, uh, please, please uh, share my love. I'll see them soon. Um, and, then, and then Brother Dan, um, precious to my mom and, a, and, um, and a, a source of joy in the family. Great state of Texas with his sweet life, Ashley, and their, and their bundles of joy. All incredible things, incredible siblings, in-laws, nieces, and, and nephews. And then my most excellent, amazing wife, Kathy, and the joy of our lives, Cody and Joey. So thanks for your unconditional love of dad, times tough love, telling dad. Oh. So I love you guys. And then friends, uh, moving on, uh, friends also are very emotional. So friends, it, it, the many folks out here make a difference in our lives. So um, it, Colonel Kirk, Colonel and Mrs. House, Jim Jeffords, 
the others uh, just calling out by names those that that i know were, were driving and, and trying to get in here but to all my mentors peers past soldiers employees thanks for your friendship and your support and your counsel and, and to general peoples bosses aren't always a blessing um but ma'am you lead with with genuine care thoughtful guidance consistent encouragement and i thank you not just for the opportunity but for for that leadership we did come in a few weeks apart, and I'm, I'm just very thankful that it worked out. You're able to see me off uh, onto my, my next steps. Will you take next, uh, your next command? Mr. Savage, Mr. Durrett, Phil, Steph, representing the entire LRD team, I, I really appreciate your patience with me um, I, and your wise counsel. Thanks for running such a professional organization. And, and I genuinely miss all the people and, and miss most of the processes at LRD. Uh, to my fellow commanders, um, here, here's what's crazy to me in, in the Army and, and why, you know, with family and with friends, I choke up a little. 20 plus years, we've, we've most of us served, and, and it's a competitive sport to some extent. You get, you get evaluated every year and you get looked at against your peers. And these, these gentlemen were nothing but, but selfless, helpful, encouraging, um, and, and really friends that I could rely on when times were challenging. And I thank you all for your friendship, for your decades of service. Colonel Crispino, thanks for making the trip down uh, to see your little brother in the South. And to Steph, so I, I had multiple deputies um, as a reflection of my leadership. So Steph, uh, Lindsay, the corporate board, um, thanks for your friendship. Thanks for your thoughtful leadership, your willingness to tackle the tough challenges. Uh, as senior civil servants, you seldom receive the credit or recognition of your successes, uh, similar to uh, G6 uh, or IT in the Army. Um, we, don't, we don't much talk to them unless everything's broken and then we talk loud. Uh, and I see that a lot with our senior uh, civilians, take a lot of the heat rounds, um, but you all, you all handle those very well. And all these successes that, that General Peoples talked about and, and that I highlight are, are a result of, of you, and I appreciate uh, your dedication. We held district farewell last week, and even though I couldn't list off all the people uh, that do all the work and make Nashville so exceptional, I, I, I really said a couple things that struck with me as I, as I close, close up command. Great people. Uh, across the board have great ad attributes, great character. But here, here you say, sim simplify it down to two, two things I looked at, um, is competence and, and attitude. And in, in this Nashville district, we have that in spades. I, I was blown away by the, by the competence. Um, it, just, just last week, as we go through the Center Hill Water Control Manual, and, and Colonel Green was able to come in on that, the, the level of technical expertise to try and balance all these competing interests on something that's going to be contentious um, is very re reassuring as a commander. Uh, and then, you know, really, for me, attitude is also a key attribute in a, a leader uh, and in, in us as, as employees. And the, the biggest takeaway when I first came to Nashville, and I've seen it over and over and over again, and it is not the, just the Nashville district, it's this region, it's, it's the seven states we touch, it's each one of you. And that's a, an, an attitude of, of positive, an attitude of if times are tough, let's put our heads down and let's get after it. An attitude of accepting uh, responsibility even when it's not something that you created. And that, that's been, I think, the most rewarding thing to watch as a commander because you worry about how these stresses are gonna play out on, on the workforce. So I, I've, really, I've really enjoyed now 800 plus people. Um, I feel like one more year and I could probably nickname name all 800 of them. I've got here, I, I see the Tims, or at least half the Tims, TNT, um, General Ben, Nate the Great, Honey Badger, uh, Bowtie Bill, except on Fridays when he's Wild Bill because he takes it off, uh, but he has it on today, so Bowtie Bill. Um, Jimbo 5.0, not to be confused with Jimbo Fisher, who won 5.0 games last year, but Jimbo 5.0, um, Krusty, Yo-Yo, Kenda Bear, B.B. Barnes, came in with an already great nickname. Uh, but just so many, Papio Carrington, Jojo Man, General, 
and, and all, the, all these folks and the nicknames to me um, that they allowed. I mean, my favorite, well, I won't tell them. Okay. <laughs> I have some favorites, and, and if, if we happen to talk afterward, I will share those. I, for the sake of time, an incredible mission that General, that General Peoples discussed. I think the circumstances we came into, as I said, were, were a lot more challenging than, than anticipated by, by many of us. And they're reflective of challenges that large businesses, organizations, small and large, face across the world. COVID, COVID looked like it was going away, it came back. Uh, the impacts to supply chain, the impacts to inflation, to labor shortages, and it, it all came to a head. Uh, and, and then I think really the, the additional mandates that came out with that and the, the stressors it put on the team as we tried to figure out how we were gonna manage the work. So we've had, we've had the opportunity to deliver at two of the highest priorities in the, in the nation's portfolio right now in the Inland Water Nav, and that's Kentucky and Chickwalk. And the spotlight grew as those grew in priority and also as they got funded, and we really were challenged to, to um, ensure we were delivering those as, as successfully as possible. And, and you add in what you are as a, as a states are dealing with, with population growth, which is a great thing, some extreme weather that we've experienced over this two years and periods before. Uh, what does all that mean as it stressed the importance of the reservoirs, the mission to manage all the water benefits across the portfolio? And I, I really um, I think that's where, where the partnership played off. So we lost Wilson, um, may he rest in peace, the, the floating guide wall at Wilson Lock. Um, I got called at two in the morning early in command, so, and I thought they were playing a trick, that they couldn't find a wall. Um, and and I, didn't think, I didn't think it was funny at two in the morning, um, or that they thought I was that dumb, but come to find out I, I actually was, because it, it was lost. Um, so we miss Wilson, but working with TVA uh, and partnering tight there, working with TVA as we transition towards the centralized um, hydropower operations and all the work that went into that. Responding with, with uh, Director Sheehan, um, National Guard, um, and then and TDEC always um, on, on the tragic events with the tornadoes and, and then also with Waverly. Uh, and Mayor, Mayor Frazier, it is, it is great to see you here. Um, I think if I could, Major, Mayor Frazier, Buddy Frazier and his wife, uh, just emblematic of this region. Uh, a tragic flood. A, a part-time mayor for that town that's also a volunteer at our core uh, recreation site out there. Dropped everything and for days and days was working challenges that, um, they had, you know, not, not many of us uh, could handle and definitely couldn't handle alone. And I really, really got to see Tennessee. I got to see uh, the South. Uh, I got to see Buddy, I got to see his wife, um, serving the community. Um, I got to see the director and his team. I got to see Commissioner Sawyers and his team band together and ultimately put together this task force uh, that, that, that I think is a, an extremely responsible and insightful way to get after this problem and make sure that we continue to uh, do everything we can uh, for the citizens of this great uh, area. And, I, and so thanks for being here. I, I do appreciate Director Sheehan, Commissioner Sawyers, uh, your, your leadership, your, your wisdom, and, uh, and your friendship. So the things we do matters, how we do it matters, especially in emergencies, um, but also aggressively pursuing solutions. In this way, Mayor Cooper, leaders here in Nashville, wrestling with these impacts right around us. Uh, population growth, I think um, you, you've seen it as you drive around this, this city. The impacts of the weather uh, on, on flood, flood maps and zoning, water supply, responsible growth, and state elected officials who have been so supportive of our mission. The 29 congressional members across the seven states and the districts, great to see many of you hardworking directors and staff here today. You've helped remind me we have great people working at every echelon, uh, and, and that's the way the system's supposed to work. We truly have an incredible mission. I've, 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 I've learned more and more all the way up until even last week as we were dealing with real estate and it, and it never stops. And it, it's, it's very, um, I, I'm very much gonna miss this deployment uh, and the team that's formed here uh, before me and, and continue to uh, perform. 
As we welcome a new command team and go through a, a numerous tr transition, we see a lot of opportunity. Making way for new talented folks to continue moves forward. Leaving is bittersweet, but honestly a lot easier when you have folks like Colonel Rob Green and his lovely family joining the team. Rob, it's been a pleasure getting to know you and meeting your family, and it's encouraging to me uh, to see your, your skills, passion, and perspective. And I know the district and our partners are in great hands. Um, Maverick, uh, Major Mannering, does a great job highlighting Tez Teddy Roosevelt's man in the arena. And I won't do it justice, but I, I, I do like the, the quote. It, it's not the critic who counts, not the one who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the one who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends their lives in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he falls, at least falls while daring greatly, so this place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who, who neither know victory or defeat. It's been my greatest honor to get in the arena with you all. When I spend some time with others in the arena, I learn respect, I gain perspective, I value the teamwork, I gain humility and a deep appreciation for what each of you contribute to this vital program and the people of this community. As I close, one small story. In, in what become my tradition with this team, I leave you with a phenomenal dad joke. What does my wife's fat blind cat say when he is in pain? Meow. Uh, <laughs> meow. Poor Sir Winston suffers agonizing hunger pains each night, usually as I'm falling fast asleep. And I talk to Winston and I remind him we often find ourselves in circumstances that are beyond our control, but we always have the ultimate choice, and that's our attitude. And Winston still chooses to meow, don't be like Winston. Live, love, laugh in the face of challenges. Do it together, because this still comes down to people, working together, laying our capabilities, bonding in the challenges, working overtime, covering shifts, coming in on the weekends, responding to emergencies. All this critical work and the additional funding will continue to put pressure on this team in the future. Many folks are tired and frustrated, uh, anxious, um, some, some angry. Leaders are, are worn down. Take time to focus on what centers you like faith, family, and friends do for me. Reach out and seek help. We're in this together. I'm learning that. I'm learning to ask for help. I've called Colonel Crispino a lot more in the last year than I did in the first, true, um, and, and many of you. Take care of yourselves, your loved ones, each other. I thank you all for your dedication and support over the past two years. This has been the highlight of my career because of you. I will miss you all greatly. You are making a difference. Keep building strong and moving forward together. Essayons. Ladies and gentlemen, the 68th and incoming commander of the Nashville District, Lieutenant Colonel Robert W. Green. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, friends, family, thank you all for attending this just terrific ceremony this morning. It's already been a tremendous event, and it would not be possible without the incredible amount of planning and coordination from the staff of the Nashville District and the support of our partners in the Tennessee National Guard. Please join me in a round of applause for Ms. Joanne Mann, Ms. Betty Barnes, Mr. Bill Peoples, Mr. Todd, Major Todd Mannering, and all the members of the Tennessee National Guard who made today's ceremony possible. I 
I do want to start my comments with an apology to all of you uh, for how many times you're about to uh, hear me say this phrase, thank you. Um, tried to find some different phrases in the thesaurus, but uh, nothing does it justice. Well, I clearly have done uh, very little so far in the 10 minutes I've been commanding the district. Uh, I'm already feel both humbled and incredibly thankful for all the individuals over the course of my life that have supported and guided me in order, to, in order for me to be blessed with this opportunity to lead such an amazing team. First and foremost, I need to thank God for his blessings and his protection. I believe that God has a path for each of us and that he works through the people in our lives to guide us on that path. In my case, he may have needed to enlist a few more folks than normal to bring me along, but nonetheless, I am thankful and humbled for all of his blessings and answered prayers. At the top of the list of people that God has used to bless my life is my family, starting with my absolutely amazing wife, Crystal. She has listened to all of my riveting stories about engineering projects and staff meetings for decades, uh, and has never once let me notice that she was anything less than completely enthralled. <laughs> she has supported my career decisions through nearly 13 PCS moves, I say nearly because we're still in the middle of one, across every part of this country. She has been my most trusted advisor and my confidant over worries from either work or life in general. She has been a more phenomenal mother and spouse than I could have ever imagined. You're my best friend. And ever since we were just cadets wandering a land nav course together, I knew I could not have found my way through this life without you. Thank you. I love you. To my crazy kids, Jacob, Taylor, and Autumn, thank you for being the pride of my life. You all make sure there is never a dull moment your excitement and energy make me so proud of you each and every day. I can't wait to see what adventures we're going to get up to here in the Music City, but I know we're going to have a blast. To my parents, mom, dad, thank you for raising me and Joe and Jeremy in the way that you did. You raised us to know the value of family, to believe in service to others, and have the grit to accomplish our goals. I know a career of exposures to dangers and hardships is never what any parent's first choice would be for their child. But your love and support throughout my career has been unconditional. And for that, I can never say thank you enough. To my brothers, my aunts and uncles, my cousins, my second cousins three times removed, thank you for helping me to always know where home is, no matter where the Army has taken us, and to always be there with open arms to welcome us home no matter how long we've been away. Brigadier General Peoples, Lieutenant General Spellman, thank you for your trust and confidence in my abilities to take this command of such an incredible organization. I pledge to do everything in my ability to continue to earn your trust and to guide the district as we move forward together to deliver for the region and for the nation. To all my Army mentors, peers, teammates, thank you. Thank you for pulling me up when I've fallen short. Thank you for believing in me when I've doubted my abilities, and thank you for being the types of leaders that I can strive to be. A big thank you to all the soldiers, NCOs, and Army civilians that I've had the pleasure of calling teammates over my previous assignments. This profession, as General Peoples mentioned, is a team sport, and I've had the blessing to have found my way onto teams full of rock stars at seemingly every step along my career. Any successes that I may have been a part of are due much more to your efforts and sacrifices than anything of my own. To Lieutenant Colonel Joe Saul, thank you for your hospitality and welcomeness over the last few months. I echo that it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. Your advice and your transparency and your support has provided all the tools I could possibly need to continue to carry the torch with the district. You've led this team through unprecedented challenges and it's undeniable that your leadership of the district will be incredibly difficult to live up to. Lastly, to the Nashville district, thank you for the warm welcome to the Music City. I'm incredibly proud to be assuming the role as your 68th commander. 
This is the most professional and distinguished district in the Corps of Engineers, and I'm thrilled to be calling each of you my teammates. We are undoubtedly going to face some challenges over the coming years. Some of these challenges we can see coming, but from my experience over my last 18 years in this profession, I sense that there are some challenges that are waiting for us that we don't yet appreciate. Rather than be worried or bothered about these future challenges, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what we're going to accomplish as we pull together with our partners from across the region and across the nation. This district has an incredible history and a tradition of delivering to meet the nation's most difficult challenges going back over 130 years. But I'm excited to join this team as we build on those traditions and we continue to deliver for the American people for the next 130 years. Thank you all again for attending today's ceremony. I can't wait to lead this team as we safely deliver quality projects on time and on budget for the benefit of the region and of the nation. SAONs, Building Strong, Nashville Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the departure of the colors and join in the singing of the Engineer and Army songs. The words are located on the back of your program.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in position until the official party departs, followed by their families. On behalf of the Commander of the Great Lakes and Ohio River Division, we wish to thank you for your attendance at today's change of command ceremony. The outgoing commander, Lieutenant Colonel Saul and his family will receive friends and well-wishers in the back left of the auditorium. The incoming commander, Lieutenant Colonel Green and family will receive guests on the back right of the auditorium directly following the ceremony. Thank you for joining us on this historic occasion. Building strong, SAONs, Army strong. Thank you.